Welcome back to the channel, my YouTube family. Uh, I have a very interesting episode ahead of us today as I met Eyi Ogbebo. She's the founder of Savoyet Interior and Hotel, one of the biggest interior design companies here in Nigeria. For her, it all started when she got suspended from her day job and decided it is time to go chase her dreams and do what she loved. I actually love. didn't leave my job. I had issues then, little issue with my boss, and, yeah. and I actually got a suspension. So I'm like, okay, this is God t telling me it's, time, it's to... time to go. After several years of working and building the brand, she has become the go-to person for luxury interior decor in Nigeria. We had a goal. We wanted a high-end clients from commissioners to speakers of uh, assemblies to orbers. Those orbers are not going to refer you to a bank clerk. They are going yeah. to refer you to another orber. To prove her expertise and a decent proof of work, she bought herself a million dollar home as a birthday gift here in Lagos. She did the interior work herself to show people what she's capable of doing. Then I started telling friends, oh, bring your friends. And it, it almost served as a mini showroom for me. Hmm. So people would come and be like, oh, this is nice, you did this. Yeah. And I was getting loads of referral from that yeah. house. A big break was when she, you know, landed a contract to furnish a 4,000 square meter home owned by an undisclosed Nigerian wealthy citizen sometime years ago, right? That was massive. 11 living room house. Damn. <laughs> yes. So in today's video, she shared how she was able to build a successful interior designing company from scratch right here in Lagos, Nigeria. And you should stay tuned. And if it's your first time here on the channel, my name is Steven. I make videos about travel and real estate all around Africa. I'm going to like you to join my family by subscribing to the channel. And if you go ahead and like this video, you're simply recommending this video to more people. So like this video and now Let's dive into the video. I mean, when I was researching there. about you, I saw an article, I don't know if it's true, but they said one of your hit jobs then when you started was you got like a 4,000 um, square meter home to fund. Yes, it. yes, so that, real, was, right? that was that was massive. 11 living room house. Damn. <laughs> yes, yes. I was scared when I said, I'm like, he told me, oh, I have a project for you. We did a small project for him. And it's like, wow, he was very impressed. Then it's like, you know what, let me take you to my village house. Yeah. So we passed, because there was like a lot of water, like they, they, they were trying to fix the road. So we passed the house. I didn't know that was the house. They were going to pass the other street, because the house occupies an entire street. So we passed and we went round. So when I saw him going round, and I saw him approaching the house, I'm like, is that the house? And I said, oh yes, yes, palace. I'm trying. He didn't, he, he, I didn't want him to see the shock in my face. I'm like, he's like, yes, I'm trying to pass. I wrote this, but I'm like, go do, how am I going to do this? It seemed too big, Yeah. you know, and I didn't have that much staff strength. Then we're not even up to 10. Wow. I mean, the, 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 the paid employment, yeah. the ones I was paying as my own, in my payroll. Yeah. But of course we had the people we work with, artists yeah. and all. Yeah. So that was a huge break. Damn, how long did it take you to complete that project? Uh, over a year. <laughs> over a year, <laughs> yes. I can imagine. Over a year. But we did a great job. Yeah. Yes. So when he would come with his people and they'd be like, wow, this girl, how this lady, I had to stay in emo states. I stayed there for Christmas. I stayed there for New Year. Damn. That year, that was 20, 2012 or so. It's really weird to see someone become a multi-millionaire from designing interiors, you know? How did it all start for you? And basically, why did you choose interior designing as, you know, a career you want to spend most of your life doing? When I started, yeah. I really did not know. I mean, there was, uh, there's money involved. But of course, if you work, you have to get paid. Yeah. Doing interior design is something I've always wanted to do hmm. um, since I was probably 16. Yeah. I knew it was a need to do it because even when I walk into a space, I look at the spaces and I'm like, oh no, they should have done this like this. Yeah. They should have been like this. Yeah. So even when I moved to Lagos mm. in um, 2007, okay. I didn't have enough funds to start then. Oh. And I didn't know enough people because yeah. I just moved. So I joined an insurance company. So when I left, okay. I had um, saved enough money to float my own company. Oh, okay. But of course we started small. Yeah. We started with the basics like curtains, paintings, mm. um, a beautification, yeah. which, which is um, 
to me, the main part of interior design. Mm -hmm. Because once you upgrade and beautify a space, all you need to do is just throw in the furniture. Yeah. When did you decide to say, okay, I'm going to leave my job and I want to chase my dreams? Like, I want to go ahead and do what I I actually love. didn't leave my job. It okay. was just something that happened. I had issues then, uh, a little issue with my boss, and I, yeah. and I actually got a suspension. So I'm like, okay, this is God t telling me it's, time, it's to... time to go. So maybe if I didn't get that suspension, I probably still would have started interior design, yeah. but not as not at that time. Yeah. I was still going to give myself about maybe a year or two. When I was going to open my store, my first store in Vigusi, Yeah. I, oh, they almost seized my two containers. Yeah. And a week to my opening, I didn't have anything. And I'd shared out invites, I had whiskey coming, I had everybody. Wow. I'm like, my God, oh this my is it. Yeah. Should I just cancel and just be done with this business? We we're going to the port 3 a.m. We we're sleeping at the port in the car. But after that, I said, if I can go through this, yeah. then I can, which was there for three months acquiring so much damage so after that i said you know what i think i'm ready now i bought a small house yeah. and i designed it myself oh. then i started telling friends oh bring your friends and it, it almost served as a mini showroom for me hmm. so people would come i'm like oh this is nice you did this yeah and i was getting loads of referral from that yeah. house and there's one thing about you you always like to use where you live as a show house and that's actually what makes you very unique because you're like I'm going to design what I'm going to live in, sort of. Yes. Right? It's just a vision, you know. In my head, I already know what I want. Like, if I go into a space, it's more difficult because I'm thinking for the client. Mm. So I'm thinking, hey, would he like this? But with mine, I know what a lot of people like because I've been able to read a lot of people's minds. Yeah. Because I've worked for a lot of people. people. So I just implement different spaces in my own house. I bring in avant-garde here. I drop contemporary here. I bring in the classic here. I bring in Regency here. So even if you come into my house, it's a mixture of several things. I mean, on your birthday when you posted and everything, people were like, Wow, this is in Lagos. It actually went viral on the internet yes, and I was like, yes, oh my God, did. I can't wait to meet this person. It did. We're, we're hoping to do a showroom that is going to go more viral. Viral, right? Hopefully, Okay, yes. so you've talked about how, like, your designs and all, but, um, because whenever I see your designs, because I, I follow you on, uh, on social media, I see the work you do, and I'm always like, wow, what's in her head when she's doing all of these things? So, kind of like walk us through how you source inspiration for every new brief you have. Mm, I, to me, I don't, I don't like to repeat designs mm. because I believe every individual is different in yeah. their own ways. Uh, my inspiration, first of all, is I have to meet the client. If I meet the client once, maybe if it's a couple, I meet both of them. It's just like there's a job now we're doing in Abia. Mm. And I told the architect, I'm like, I have to meet the clients. I, I need to just talk to them. He's like, no, I have all the briefs. I'm like, no. no. Let me just talk to them. Yeah. I met the client. I was with them for about less than an hour. Mm. And I could totally tell what they want. First of all, the most important thing is working with colors. Yeah. You need to know what colors they can't stand. Yeah. So when I meet the person, the first thing I'm like, what colors do you hate? Before I go for what colors do you like? Yeah. Right? Some people say, I don't want black. So you know, oh no, no black. Some go, I don't want red. So it's easier to know what they don't want that know what they want. So yeah. that's a better guide. Yeah. Knowing what they don't they want. want. Okay. So when I just go into a space, it's just a gift, really, because yeah. I, I myself, I don't know. So I've been meaning to ask you this particular question. How did you feel gifting yourself like a million dollar home? Like, how, how was the feeling? It's actually more than, <laughs> but I knew what I wanted, like I said, and I gave myself a year. I was going to start it in 2018, but I said, no, I was so busy. So 2019, I got the land. 2020, immediately that COVID started yeah. when they did the lockdown in March. I just put in the work because yeah. almost everybody was at home. So I just put in so much and finished it. Yeah, because I, I shoot a lot of uh, real estate videos so in your estate. I because I, I shoot a lot of videos there for developers as well. So I saw when the building was coming. So I then I left. I wasn't around for a while when I came back. I was like oh, okay. Bro. And then I saw the, the news broke on the internet. Like yeah. a thirty five year old woman give give her a million dollar home and I was yes. like what? We we I actually did the design. I sat down with my architect one day 
we cropped like four designs this 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 i told him okay this we, they did a design before which yeah. i paid for but it wasn't cutting it for me it was it looked too it looks more like for someone in his 70s yeah you know so i'm like you know what i want an exterior look i don't want the very strong classic i want that soft like that you know like the white house kind of classic <laughs> that's you know? the same way it feels yes exactly so <laughs> yeah then what i did is i went abroad i bought everything to do with the finishing wow. took all my dimensions my flooring i think the only thing i did here are the ceilings but the flooring the batwares everything the exterior tiles, everything, the doors, I bought them abroad, shipped them. So it was fast because all we did was empty the containers and yeah. we're just walking. Then three months after, I went back, brought in everything for the interior. Wow. Kitchens, closets, everything. People see, you know, people like you that have achieved a lot, you know. Some people want to think that, oh, she was privileged, came from a privileged background. So I always make sure I have you know the people i'm interviewing t tell me about you know uh their like their upbringing and you know how life was at that point in time for you well um i wouldn't say my background wasn't privileged but definitely um we went to good schools yeah my dad was very particular about that but it had no particular impact on my career mm. um my chosen career path right yeah. now it was something that became more of say passion a hobby then yeah. became a full-blown career mm, yeah. so it's not it had nothing to do yeah. with it actually when i left insurance yeah. that was in 2009 2010 when i lost my dad 2009 it affected me a lot so i was a bit rusty with work yeah so in 2010 my i, I got suspended and i'm like okay it's time to right go call. chase my dreams yeah. it's time to chase my dreams it's almost impossible for you to do a business in Nigeria and not encounter mm. several challenges. Lot, so, right? what, are, what are the challenges that come with your type of business? Loads of challenges. I'll tell you the major four or five. Yeah. That is still something. It's, it was still trying to get, you know, get better with artisans, mm. the people we work with, masons, you know, the woodwork guys, the, the screeders, yeah. the maloon guys. Working with these people because some of these people have little or no educational education, background yeah. so working with them and making them understand your vision it almost feels like passing a thread to the eye of a needle yeah some of this um, staffs yeah. right the, the, yeah. the staff strengths you have it almost feels like you're training a lot of them yeah and these people have gone through the four walls of a proper university say you say the architects the engineers the uh, QS guys yeah you know some of them is like they just pass through school but school doesn't pass through them so you're almost, you're teaching them again on the field. Yeah, yeah. Maybe taking them to the standard of work you do. Yeah. But at least knowing the basics, they know the basics, but not as much as they should. Mm. But some are really good, but some you're wondering like, are you sure you actually studied this? That yeah. too is a problem. Yeah. So it's like you're training a bunch of people, people yeah. all the time. And let's say these people, after two years they go, you start training again. Yeah. So that's number one. Wow. Number two is dealing with the clients because it's like you have to study and master the act of emotional intelligence. You need to know when, when to say, okay, I'm, it, this, that's it. I can't deal anymore can't because it. some clients can frustrate <laughs> you, right? Number three, a quality. You know, it's like um, you buy this. You buy this because we do finishing. Yeah. And we can't sell everything. Yeah. We always, it's just like we do a job now and they tell us, oh, the jacuzzi just stopped working. Yeah. They yeah. expect us to be, to, to replace it. But you call this evil guys and they're like, ah, no, madam, no, you know? So uh, dealing with other contractors, subcontractors yeah. yeah. is, is a big, is a big problem. Yeah. Then I'll say the fourth one, clearing, clearing our things. Oh, dealing okay. with the ports. This is more of a government problem. Yes, it's a problem. It, it takes too long. Normally in some countries, in African countries, yeah, very seamless. A week, you're, you're out. Then today, it's this price. Next week, they call you, it's this price. Yeah. Yes, it's crazy. Even with the COVID now, it even affected the price of, clear, um, of freight. Say we used to clear 4,000 plus, now it's about 8,500. 8, yeah. So it just doubles, then you have to carry your clients along. 
have to carry them along with the yeah, clearing. Yeah. Yeah. So those four fundamental problems. So if there's one thing you feel the, the if if you had the opportunity, you let the government change I think or they amend. Should, I think so they should do more universities that are practical, not just, just theory. Technical. Yes. Technical schools. Technical yes. schools where people actually go to the field. It's just like some interior schools. Yeah. They don't teach them in class. They just teach them maybe twenty percent in class. But eighty percent they take them. They show them. It's like if I tell a typical architect now, say we want to employ them, and I say snag this project, mm. they'll be looking at something that even some of the people that work with us yeah. that did not study architecture, they would see it, but they're looking and they can't see, they can't it. see it. Yeah. So I don't think also, I think some of these lecturers are not doing enough. Probably they don't know. They are not in the field because we, were, we all had lecturers that were just theoretical, lecturers they have yeah. never practiced what they are preaching exactly that's the pro that's a problem yeah it's a major problem at that point you decided to start till now how many years has it been um it's gonna be 12 years this wow more than a decade yes <laughs> okay so um just i don't know qu quickly bullet points however you want to do it like how how were you able to do this in you know this time space like how were you able to oh, wow. build this brand we're still building. Yeah. We're still hoping to take it to the next level. But I'll say three things that really worked for me is um, being very consistent, mm. quality assurance, making sure that we have returning clients. Yeah. Because when you don't have returning clients and clients that are referring you, that's very dangerous for business. Then number three, being very persistent, trying to gather the right team yeah. all the time. So I always make sure I have the right hands. So even before we lose some right hands, yeah. I start training some more hands, more hands yeah. and you know make them just as good. Good, yeah. So I'm never, I'm never left stranded, that because I sense. have a friend now. She's into makeup, yeah. And every, she's like she's losing staff probably every month. They just go. They just go, yeah. So I tell her no. Once you start to see the signs, start to fill them up. Yeah. When you see this person is be behaving weird, start to get more people to feel yeah. because they will go they yeah. always do so but don't ever be left stranded to the point where even when you have a project you're limited because you can't be everywhere at the same time that makes total sense so um because i always like asking this particular question like do you um i know obviously you source for most of your stuff from the abroad so you, you ship them in but um, what's the percentage like uh, the locally? Do you, uh, do you we, source we for make, any local? No, we, we do a lot of locally made. Okay, what's the, I want to know the percentage. Like how many foreign um, imported and. Ma most of our contemporary bedrooms, yeah. we make them. Oh. At least 75%. So it means you have carpenters. As Very good in Otta. We have a factory in Otta where we. Make okay, so I, I, when I was researching about you, I didn't see this part. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, we don't, we don't really put it out there. Because you see, Nigerians too, they also have that, oh, it's made here. But they need to see it and appreciate it. Mm. So when they see it, we tell them, okay, we can make for you. But we source, say, the fabric, the accessories, we buy them abroad. Yeah. So when we make them, you almost can't tell that it was made. But I just feel, not just Nigerians, people just like to hear, oh, this is from Turkey. Yes, they from want Spain. to, yes, they always feel like, of course, when you import it, you can't, I mean, the quality is always better. Yeah. You can't deny that fact. But Nigeria, and yeah, we're getting really good. We have some guys that are really skilled, but they just need to be leveled. Like, they are never, ever settled. Like, they, I don't just know what if you say a black man problem. <laughs> like, you, they, they, they know the job. At times I tell some of my people, and I'm like, do you know you're so good? But I don't know if it's home problem. Just put your head down. Down, yeah. But you're good. They know what to do. If you give them the right machines, right equipment, yeah. they know what to do. But you can call them two weeks. Two weeks, they disappear. You don't see them. They tell you, Madam, I want to be a kuta. You know, but you see, abroad, they have that culture of being very put together. Yeah. If they're working in this factory, that's where they are. Work in the factory? Yes. Yeah. I, I saw you the way you, you were speaking to your clients, you know, taking them along. Like, what, I mean, that's one of the things you do different. But what are the other things you do, like you guys at Savage uh, Interiors and Hotel do differently as an mm, interior designing we, company? We strive for perfection and we make the clients feel very comfortable. What I tell people is, when 
you know, that's the same emotional intelligence. Mm. You know, people, I mean, the, this client, well, you see this lady yeah. that just left, we've been working together almost seven years. I'm sure you, yeah. Yes, and she's still coming back. There are other people, but then we manage them so well. She says, oh, I want glass. Okay, I'll give you glass. Oh, I want to, I'll give I'll it to you. you. I'll give it to you. Uh, you're paying for it. I'll give it to you. But some people keep trying to make it. No, it's not possible. It's not. Just always make them feel it's possible. It's possible. We'll right. do it and strive to do it. And once you do it, they will come back. So one thing we do that works for us is we don't take no for an answer. Hmm. It's always possible. Say yes you want a chair that flies, we'll try. <laughs> okay, we want a chair that flies now. <laughs> <That's him. laughs> we'll try. Yeah. I mean, we lose businesses because people feel, oh no, they are expensive. I mean, no. they are seeing bureaus. Like, what do you think? This is, lo this is luxury. Uh, yeah, you know? <laughs> so it's just, like, it's just like when you sell Hermes, the people selling Hermes know who's coming to buy it. Buy it, yeah. Yeah, so, so everybody strives to be able to afford luxury yeah i mean you, a, a typical man working is hoping to get promoted so if he gets promoted he's not going to go for the normal lifestyle that yeah. he had before he was promoted definitely so basically we were just lucky i'll say because uh, i also think your friends too have a big impact in the business you do wow so then the friends i had they were friends with a lot of big people. So I would tell them, you bring this person that. to my house, tell this person, oh, if you're coming, oh, please come without your uncle, you know, and they come. So we, were, we, we had a goal. We wanted a high-end clients. So we started with the high-end clients from commissioners to speakers of uh, assemblies to orbers. So those orbers are not going to refer you to a bank clerk. They're going to yeah. refer you to another orber. Okay, guys, so that's basically it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. So as you know, we're trying to crush 100,000 subscribers here on the family. So if it's your first time, subscribe. So something I always do, I like telling my guests to tell them to subscribe to the channel. Please, please, please. subscribe to his channel. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you so much. So uh, okay. like this video if you like it. And uh, to the next video. Yeah, so the next video is going to be uh, a video of her house. So she's been talking a lot about her house. You're going to see it in real time what this house looks like for yourself so uh watch the next video because that's the next video we'll post bye bye <laughs>